Welcome to Final Fantasy XIV, your first day, where we start a war campaign, but take a break before the final critical mission to spend a few weeks learning how to work with our hands. I'm sure the realm will survive in the meantime. Last time, as I said, we began our campaign against the Garleans. Operation Archon is in full swing, we made it to level 50, and the preparation for entering Castrum Meridianum, final strike to stop the Ultima weapon. But the last two dungeons might end up giving us lengthy cues that we'll go over next time. And we just have a use for crafting in general. As a result, we're gonna head back to town, all three towns, and pick up each and every crafter. Don't expect this to be some super in-depth explanation of how crafting works. Whenever I get around to that, this video will include a card in the top right and link in the description to that, but for now, I'm going to go into a more surface level explanation of the options we have. Let's head inside and get our hands dirty. Becoming a crafter, much like any other class, is simple as can be. Head to the guild, talk to the secretary until you get the quest, and then talk to the guild master. Put on your new weapon, your crafting tool, and save the gear set. And let it be said now, no, you won't stand a chance in combat. Don't even try. But if we go into our skill list, we could see a lot of skills. A lot of them. And four traits. But we only have one to start with, like normal. Crafters introduce you to skills even slower than battle classes, it feels like. This is intentional, if only because crafting is an extremely in-depth system, when you try to do it on your own. The base system is simple, but the journey is extremely complex. For our first craft, let's grab our first class quest and do as instructed. The materials for maple lumber, as I am beginning with carpenter, can be easily purchased from the guild's own vendor. As the active help tells us, we can see the required materials in the crafting log. Three maple logs. Simple. But there's also this big button at the top of the recipe list that, when we click it, gives us more options. For now, I only have the Ixali Beast Tribe, which I'll go over later. For now, let's swap back and keep things simple. Three maple logs for one length of maple lumber. If you are super cheap, the very, very few gill it takes to buy from the vendor can be circumvented by going out and gathering the logs yourself. I recommend leveling your gatherers before or during your crafter leveling for reasons we'll get into later. But for now, I recommend just buying from the guild vendor while you can. You'll see there are a lot of items here. A lot of variety. Wooden stuff, metal stuff, anything you will need for the first 15 levels of carpenter crafts or so will be in this shop. But with three logs, we can actually begin our first craft. We have one button only, so we use that. This will increase the progress bar a bit. Our goal for every single craft is to fill this progress bar to max. Simple, right? On our way back to the Guildmaster, I noticed maple lumber disappeared from the list of crafts I have. This gear at the top of the window has two filters you can adjust. The saved over from the craft projects on my main, so that's something to keep in mind for you. We have filters, and much like gatherers, we also have a recipe search box. Make liberal use of this, because sometimes finding the item you want to craft is not exactly easy. But for completing our first quest, we get the first proper piece of crafting gear. It gives us a large amount of craftsmanship. One of the three stats of crafters. Craftsmanship, Control, and CP, or crafting points. Using the many, many logs we were given for free to practice crafting with, we can see the difference this gear piece has made immediately. Where the first craft only did 6 progress for one button press, I now do 11 progress. This is while having 39 craftsmanship, so it's not 1 to 1. Crafting entirely is stats based. There is plenty of skill with knowing how best to do a craft. Even when you have the stats though, knowing your toolkit 
is what makes you able to do things well. But without those stats, probably crafting the item may not even be possible. I'll go a lot more into this later, but until level 5, we only have one skill. At level 5 though, we get our first touch action. Touch actions boost the second bar under the progress bar. This is the quality bar. All items have a base 1% chance of becoming high quality when completing the craft. But using touch actions, which scale based on our control stat, increases quality points and increases the chances to become high quality. This is however not linear. 50% of the bar being filled is not a 50% chance to become high quality. It will be maybe 20%. It's an exponential growth. The second half of the bar is worth far more than the first half. But again, we only have one touch action at the moment and one synthesis action. Let's move on to the level 5 quest. This is a test of making multiple items rather than just one. It's also more complex items than just simple logs and lumber. This is to simulate real craft projects. When doing craft projects, you will rarely craft a single item. You'll craft multiple items to sell, for leaves, or for use. These are also more complex than a single lumber length. We need multiple items per shield. Further, durability, progress needed, and quality needed are much higher than one log. It's at this point I recommend checking the calculations panel and keeping the craft window expanded permanently. The calculations window tells you how much each and every action you have will do if you use it per action. Well, early on we don't really have anything, skills are going to combine and change these values every single time. These numbers are going to be much more useful as we progress. But make the several items asked of you and gain a second tool. Much like gatherers, you have two tools. And while you wouldn't expect it, this second tool is required for certain recipes. The animations you do will even change with which tool you are using. Plus, even if you are using the saw, the stats of the second tool will still benefit you. So at all times, you want to have both tools equipped. Either way, we have a lot more stats now, and a new skill. This one restores durability to the craft. I did not mention it, but up till now the durability bar has been there, watching. If this hits zero, and the progress bar is not 100% filled, then the craft will fail. But if it hits zero at the same time as the progress bar maxing out, the craft will succeed. Point is, all crafts must finish before this hits zero. Most actions all reduce durability by 10, so a durability of 60 is 6 actions. Master's Mend costs a whopping 88 CP but gives you 3 more actions. Just don't use it early since that durability cap of 60 is the full cap. If you use Master's Mend at 40 points, you'll only get 20 points back instead of 30. Assuming the max of a specific craft is 60 durability. Some go up to 70. Some crafts have 80 durability. Some go as low as 35 durability. Where before our CP really didn't matter, this cost makes every point of CP more important. We'll now actually run out of CP every craft as we want to be using touch actions not just completing the crafts instantly. The balance of crafting is as follows. We want to complete the craft no matter what, but we don't want to fully invest into progress as we want to buff our quality for chances at high quality crafts, but we have a limited durability and CP to do this. We have to budget our CP and durability while aiming to max out both bars if possible. Even if we can't hit 100% quality on a craft, we want to boost quality as much as we can. Every point of quality invested into a craft is bonus EXP. Even a failed high quality 
is still a high quality bonus towards leveling. Though guaranteed 100% is ideal, since the resulting item is worth more, both in EXP and value. Any item you look at, you can hold down a specific key, control on keyboard, to change the quality of the given tooltip. So for example, I managed to craft a high quality maple cane. Holding control over the item will show me the no quality version of it. You can tell an item is high quality thanks to the symbol of the item name and the shiny gold glint in the item icon. And look at the stats when comparing high quality and no quality. At such a low level, the differences in stats between high quality and no quality are barely visible. But at higher levels, the differences are visually 10 to 15%. But with how stats end up scaling, this can be even a bigger loss. The further you get into the game, the more important the distinction between high quality and no quality becomes. So to sum it up, high quality is important because you get more EXP, they're worth more to sell, and if you intend to use the item, you gain far more stats. Though, I wouldn't really recommend crafting your own battle gear. You level too fast and dungeon gear exists. This is really something you only want to do if you fall behind in gear. Then you might consider crafting your own battle gear. Your own crafted gear though, if you can manage the high quality, it might be extremely worth it. Especially if you actually craft your way up these levels and don't get carried to level 80. Now we're into the full flow of crafting, even with such a bare toolkit. We can progress on to level 10. At level 10, we get Quick Synthesis. This is a shortcut tool for massed crafting items. Need 50 lumber? Quick Synth will craft all 50 in the time it would have taken you to manually craft 10. As long as you have crafted the item at least once before, and your craftsmanship meets the minimum recommended amount, listed in the characteristics panel at the bottom, Quick Synth will never fail. You may even get a couple high quality items out of it, but you'll gain a little less EXP since it won't be trying to do high quality crafts, so no high quality value bonuses. Your next quest is even one that will use Quick Synthesis. You will be asked to craft 12 of a simple item, so instead of crafting 12 manual crafts, do one manual craft to unlock Quick Synth, and then Quick Synth the last 11. But as mentioned, one of the items may end up coming out high quality. Let's take this one lumber I purposefully make high quality. I even use high quality mats just to make it easier. For every high quality material you use, the base chance to get high quality increases. You get points immediately towards the max to make crafting a high quality even easier. So by using three high quality logs, I all but guarantee I get a high quality lumber out of it. Now if I toss away one of the 12 no quality lumber, the quest no longer can progress. It doesn't realize one of them is high quality. Much like with gathering, quests cannot recognize the differences between high quality and no quality items because you have to hand them in in a single stack. Selecting the high quality item, you can manually turn it into a no quality item. Useful for items you don't need high quality of, and for inventory management. These quests, and not much else. But it's a good thing to keep in mind when we turn in the quest. Now when completing the level 10 quest, our guild master will recommend we look at leaves. So let's do that. These are worth a ton of EXP. If you have plenty of saved up leaves, which I'm sure you do, this will be a very, very quick way to level up. That along with the Exali. 
Upon reaching the Garuda section of the main story in the low 40s, all beast tribes become available, and Exali require only level 1 or higher crafters. I highly recommend doing these. These reward ventures for your retainers if you're not a free trial player, and tons of EXP. Later, you'll even get a special currency that allows you to purchase rare items from the Exali. To note though, the Exali do have a few special functions. For one, Quest Sync will change the level of the quest based on the level of the class you turn it in on. So you can't have a level 40 culinarian and turn it in on a level 10 carpenter and get level 40 EXP. You'll get level 10 EXP on the carpenter and level 40 EXP on the culinarian. Which speaking of that, since this was an A Realm Reborn Beast tribe, level 50 and above classes will get almost no EXP from the Exali. So this level 50 alchemist is gaining less EXP than the level 32 carpenter by a huge margin. Further, there's a special pair of gloves you must wear for every Exali craft. This somewhat limits your stats for Exali crafts, which gets messy when later levels expect you to craft high quality items. Further is the idea of crafting facilities. Not only do you need to have the gloves equipped, you must get a special buff from the relevant NPCs. If you run out on the buff, you can get it reapplied by just talking to the NPC again. The first few ranks, you might not notice anything from facilities. But later on, facilities are going to be nerfs you have to deal with. One facility might cap your CP to 200. Another might cap your control stat. All this combined makes the Exali simply more crafting, but not just simply crafting the same items you always have. But back to leveling up. We have the journey to level 15. At 15 we get the very useful function of trial synthesis. At higher levels, you may start leaning into macro crafting, something you really can't do during the leveling curve. Or maybe it's a very expensive item that you can't afford to fail. Trial Synthesis will allow you to do the craft as long as you have the needed items, but without spending the items or giving you the finished product. You can test your stats and your skills against an item with no risk to your hours of collecting materials. You can fail the craft or succeed as many times as you want with Trial Synthesis, and nothing will change. You'll just have the personal experience gained. When what you're crafting at endgame might be worth several million gil, you'll be making heavy use of Trial Synthesis, I am sure. Low levels? Not really gonna see that much use. But what is useful is the active help we got about conditions. There are four conditions to look out for. Normal, normal, good. All touch actions will increase quality with a 1.5 times multiplier. Excellent. All touch actions will increase quality with a 4 times multiplier. That is huge. Poor. All touch actions will increase quality with a 0.5 times multiplier. This will only ever come after an excellent, never by itself. Every craft's first step is normal. Afterwards, every step has a random chance to be good or excellent, but never twice in a row. If you get a good proc, the next step will always be a normal condition. Excellence will always progress into poor, then follow into normal. These can dictate a craft. You can finish several steps early. It could make an item become a high quality when you weren't otherwise going to get high quality with any chance. You'll change your actions around these when manually crafting, if you know what you're doing at least. They can massively help you. Get used to abusing 
tricks of the trade were otherwise good procs for their touch multipliers. But don't tunnel vision on them because of the buffs you use, CP you gave, and durability remaining all still have an impact. Many, many times I finish a craft with 10 durability left on a good proc. Nothing I can do with this good except ignore it. I only have 10 durability, so I have to finish the craft now. But moving on to the level 15 quest, we have to start crafting multiple different items. But finishing it will bring us onto the tier of crafts where items will no longer be sold in our guild. We're going to have to become resourceful from this point on. For example, elm logs cannot be bought. In the tooltip itself, it says shop selling price, none. This little part of every tooltip tells you at a glance if you can find an item in any shop at any point in the game, whether you have that shop unlocked or not. If it says the shop selling price is restricted, that means it is a special kind of shop, like from a beast tribe or otherwise locked shop you have to unlock at some point in the game. Even if an item says it can be purchased, from this point on, there's a very high chance that the guild isn't going to have it. The higher the level, this becomes more and more guaranteed that you can't buy the items at all. Either learn to gather, or get ready to shill some money out on the market board. Free trial players, all you can do is gather, so enjoy that. Speaking of buying, those of you who are also not on the free trial should sell your leftover crafts or materials you don't intend to keep on the market board. Earn some gill for yourself. Free trial players, just vendor the extras you have no use for, since you can't do anything else with it, what are you gonna do? Keep it? You don't exactly have a lot of inventory to deal with. But check if the item can be used in a leave first. Better to earn some EXP than toss the item to nothingness. Anything we retainer havers intend to keep, store, and try to remember it's there. And I hope you've been putting monster drops in storage. We'll see why very soon. But since crafting even for leaves is going to be difficult now, let's mention Grand Company turn-ins. I think these suck. When you first unlock the respective classes, a level 1 turn-in is available. But wait for the next daily reset, and it will adjust to your current level at reset. You can double your rewards by turning in high quality items, but leaves will give you about just as much EXP per turn in, if not more, depending on what you're given at daily reset. The turn in gave me a full level because I was just sitting here waiting. Nearly two if I had turned in high quality. But so would have leaves, and those are six a day, three every 12 hours. I even had 100 banked before starting this video. Grand Company turn-ins are once a day. Good news though, you can get a few extra Grand Company seals every day, and those are extremely useful. But let's talk about failure. Craft failure. If you fail a craft, there is a very, very tiny chance that the materials will not be spent. I believe it is 5% or so, maybe less to be only 1%, but it is possible. But that's accidental failure. What about if you purposefully use the quit button? If you start a craft but don't use any skills, remain on step 1, quit will end the craft without spending the materials guaranteed. The craft has not truly begun until you use a skill. This allows you to emergency stop a craft to put on buffs. But if you use any actions at all and see step 2, then hit the quit button. Your materials will be lost, basically guaranteed. 
That small window for emergency quitting is very important though. High-end crafting can involve multiple buffs, food, potions, the like. Starting a craft before putting these on could be disastrous. Before I move on to a second crafter though, let's push a little more to level 20 with leaves and buy a full set of accessories that max out at level 19. Accessories are huge boosts to CP count. These boosts are imperative to get. In end game rotation crafting, rotations can come down to literally needing one CP that you didn't gear up enough to have. But even while leveling up, every CP point is progress towards another skill you could use every craft. A basic touch might take 18 CP, but if you may have 15 CP left over after your average craft, 3 more CP and you'd gain an extra basic touch. That's a big difference for such a low amount of CP. CP is arguably the most important stat more important than craftsmanship and control. It changes things that much. But alright, let's move on to the other Grindanian crafter, Leatherworker. Remember all we discussed? All of it remains the same across all of the crafters, but with a few extra notes here or there. 1 to 15, you can buy all of your materials at the guild. However, Note the materials we need for leather workers specifically. Animal skins make animal leather. And what happens at level 15? The guild stops supplying us. This is where saving monster drops comes into play across all the crafters. Leather worker is just the one that feels it the most. If you didn't go on an old goat killing spree at some point, you can't make any old goat leather without doing so now, or spending a premium on the market board, or using the battle retainer I hope you have. This is why Exali and Beast Tribe dailies in general are so good even if they're so limited. Three ventures a day for a day's worth of Exali quests on a properly leveled battle retainer is 30 old goat skins, which become 30 old goat leather. That is a lot. If you aren't a free trial player, invest in your retainers as much as you can. They are going to be your saviors when you get into higher level crafting, if they aren't already saving you from spending a premium on the market board or spending hours farming. If you are a free trial player, I hope you like murdering defenseless animals, I guess. Good news is at least we have item search. Selecting an item in the inventory or the craft material list you can do an item search which will tell you the location of every one of that item across you and all of your inventory sources if you have any. There is also a text version of this, slash iSearch. So slash iSearch skin will paste a list of skins in your chat. Then you can select which skin you'd like in the chat to search for all instances of that skin within your inventories. Point is, if you haven't, get training your retainers, and also be sure to store all monster drops you get on your retainers, and use the item search functions to be able to find any items from monster drops that you might have before you go out and spend hours trying to farm it. This will save you a lot of sanity in the long run. But as mentioned, basically all the crafters follow the same basic principles up to level 20. Use your guild supplier up to level 15, and then push onto some leaves to hit level 20, so I have a full set of accessories equipped on every single one of the 8 crafters. Which, 
I recommend you doing similar for a variety of reasons. Get every crafter up to level 20. To start, gear. Class quests reward gear like normal. More gear means easier crafts because you have more stats. Secondly, gear sharing. A sub-point of the first, if you level one crafter at a time to 50, you have 50 levels worth of equipment clogging up your inventory. Leveling all the crafters at the same time, you have one set of gear all the way up to the goal. For third, we have cross-material usage. Levels 1 to 15, you may have been buying thread, wood, leather for some of your crafts. Past 15, you can't just buy it from the NPCs anymore. Only the market board, barring the rare exceptions, not the rule. From this point on, you'll also be using a lot more of those materials across crafters. Metal spear tips with a wooden handle wrapped in string or cloth or leather for a better grip. You're going to definitely want all the craft is leveled for your own sanity of crafting everything you can need. It's just going to take a lot of time, but it would take a lot of time no matter what. It'll also take a lot of gear durability. We should talk a little bit about repairs. When repairing your gear at a vendor, you are likely going to get an act of help about repairing your own gear personally. However, you need fragments of dark matter, specific levels of such depending on the level of the gear. The higher the eye level of the gear, the higher the grade of dark matter needed. But higher levels of dark matter can be used on lower level gear. Tinker NPCs are typically the ones who sell the dark matter, but this is something you definitely want to invest in when the time comes, because all self-repairs are always a full plus 100% durability. This means you can over-repair to a maximum of 199% durability if you repair a piece when it is at 99%. This is extremely powerful when you're at end game and are using the same gear set for weeks and weeks on end. Speaking of powerful though, is Materia. While leveling, you will be spirit bonding your gear at a very quick rate. Keep an eye out and constantly extract Materia when the spirit bond bar fills. We're going to go deeper into Materia soon, but when you first learned about Materia from Udemix and how to extract it from one of his disciples, I hope you kept the extracting up across all of your roles. Battle, gather, and craft especially. Now for a couple notes about certain crafters that aren't major, but are of note in the 1 to 20 process. The first is Goldsmith. The mass craft quest of this is to craft 12 handfuls of copper rings. Handfuls. Is a single copper ring a handful, or is it a single ring? The copper rings are a base material, and a single craft gives you a handful of copper rings. You will also see the quest update with every craft like a normal quest would. Many, many people seem to make this mistake. So many people that they actually make fun of this in a beast tribe in Shadowbringers. It pays to read closely. Armorer and Blacksmith should be leveled up together basically no matter what. They use literally the same guild, the same materials, and often craft some of the same exact things, mostly the ingots. These two are so closely linked, they're basically the same class. Just be wary of the fact that they have two guild shops next to each other, and you may need to look through both of them to find which one has the items needed for each craft. And now for the odd one out, Culinarian. Aside from maybe one or two recipes, 
Culinarian does not cross materials between other crafters. The few times it happens are the exceptions, not the rules. Further, Culinarian gets to be extra special and not even have all the materials required for the 1 to 15 class quests in the guild, just to show how extra annoying it is to get all the materials for Culinarian. Princess Trout can be fished or gotten from a shop closer to the Armorer and Blacksmith Guild than the Culinarian's Guild. You'll be back to this specific shop multiple times over the next few dozen levels just because of the specific ingredients sold here. I consider this a tutorial in itself, showing you early how absolutely annoying it is to level Culinarian because of how many materials you need per craft. Culinarian is basically the only crafter that regularly needs all six slots worth of materials. The good news is with Culinarian, at least you can make use of the extra meals you don't sell or do anything else with. You can use these for the 3% EXP buff for other crafters, or gatherers, or your battle classes. If nothing else, you'll be able to make some crafter food to make your crafts go smoother. CP food is especially delicious. I'll be keeping all of my culinarian food for these reasons. If you have spare inventory space and aren't going to sell it on the market, you should too. But alright, every crafter is now level 20. We have a full set of accessories, and we can now talk about Materia Melding. There are two very easy quests here at Mutamix's Bonfire. The first is a simple unlock of self-melding. The second is a test for you to meld eight times for Mutamix to unlock advanced melding. Like with vendors, the first quest allows you to put materia into any slots on your gear. If a piece of gear has these green circles, each one is a materia slot you can use to buff your stats. You must also have a crafter at the minimum level listed on each gear piece. But if you meld for Mutamix, then swap to a level 25 or higher class, you can do advanced melding. Special gear usually will say on it advanced melding forbidden, but normal gear does not have this. So let's do some advanced melding on our current gear. What advanced melding does is what is referred to as over melding. Gear will typically only have one or two slots for materia, but all gear that can be over melded and has at least one slot of materia to start actually has five materia slots. So all of the gear I am currently wearing that is appearing in the melding window actually has five meld slots. The rub is that over melding is not guaranteed. Melding into slots beyond what is displayed has a chance to fail. The further slots have even lower chances to fail. The first slot is an 80% chance, the second a 40% chance, the third a 20% chance, and the fourth overmeld, in the case of items with only one base meld slot, is a 10% chance. But that's with this low level materia, higher level materia, the chances go as low as 5% to successfully meld a fourth overmeld slot. Let's also remember the basics of melding. The listed stats at the bottom of the meld window are the current and maximum values of each stat there can be. So this plus three craftsmanship material I am trying to meld turns red and displays a plus two only because the cap would have been exceeded if I gave it a plus three. Stick to basic melding for now. Overmelding is more for endgame for the most part, or if you have a lot of extra materia. The 80% chance slots are pretty safe to fill in no matter what though. You might lose a materia or three, but you'll have slotted in a lot of extra materia that you otherwise couldn't have, and will make crafting more items 
all the easier. Plus, melded items will spirit bond faster. So the 1 to 3 material you lost trying to meld will be immediately made back by the exponential growth of the spirit bond from the melded items. Speaking of even easier though, we have a new leaf type that makes leveling even easier than before. Starting at level 20, every leaf tier will have this leaf plate that looks like a woman watching a weaver work on a spinning wheel. At first glance, this is a normal leave, but when we go to turn in, we get the option to submit additional items for no further leave cost. This is the leave plate for triple turn in leaves. So provided you are willing to invest more items into the leave, you can spend less leaves than you would need if you didn't invest multiple items. And if you're trying to level all 8 crafters at once, you're going to need more than the 100 leaf cap to get them all to level 50, let alone 60 or even level 80. So these triple turn in leaves are going to be worth even more than you realize. And it's good we went over everything we did up until now because we have the level 20 class quests next. Let's look at the needs of the Carpenter one. Iron Lance, an Elm Lumber, purchasable at one very specific vendor that isn't the guild. Iron Ingot, purchasable at a very specific vendor, not the guild. Hard Leather, purchasable at the guild. Oh man, one out of three, we did it guys, woo! So unless you know where these specific NPCs are, the lumber and the ingot you have to source yourself. Gather and craft or buy from the market, it matters not. You are already being tested on getting materials not easily found. Further, you also have to meld the item. Any material will do, so a random piece of piety or tenacity material will work wonderfully. Unless a quest specifically states the materia to use, which they will later, it can be any materia you have, and I recommend the battle materia. All of the crafters have you do this for the level 20 quest. That is to say, except Special Boy Culinarian, because you can't meld food. They've tried it, trust me. I don't think magic rocks make for very good garnish, and neither did the diners. Something to keep note of if you go out and gather the materials yourself, which let's be honest, you're probably going to do that. You may want to also gather some elemental shards, and if you see them, elemental crystals. Shards are eventually nearly completely phased out later on, and your class quests probably have been giving you thousands of shards. At the time of typing this, I have nearly 2,700 wind shards. That's why I didn't mention the elemental cost of each craft until now. You probably will never run out of shards without going for the achievements to craft thousands of items, but every craft so far has had the cost of at least one elemental shard. Keep these costs in mind later on, especially once you upgrade to needing crystals constantly, and even later, the much rarer and special clusters. Who boy, those are going to be a thing when I talk about those at level 50. Which, speaking of being a thing, we have the level 25 class quest. The class quests that introduce you to the requirement of high quality. All crafting class quests from this point on, including from Culinarian, will expect you to achieve high quality results every time. The level 30 quest proves this pretty well. The 25 quest is a singular base material of high quality, and the level 30 quest is a full item of high quality nature. So a weapon, a tool, a gear piece, it will be high quality, or you will start over. On a less diet note, we have another unlock at level 30. 
in Uldah's Sapphire Avenue Exchange, then out towards Mutamix's bonfire, we have Desynthesis. Desynth is the breaking down of items into their base components. Typically, you will receive one item and one or two types of elemental shard. Typically, it's the same elements that the craft is usually keen on using. For example, I destroyed these cloth gloves. In addition to the cloth that came out of it, they give me wind and lightning shards, as most all weaver recipes will use wind and lightning elements. And I do mean destroy the item. The gloves are now gone. But this is a very good use of fish if you can't sell them. Since that's typically the only use for those kinds of fish, specifically for a decent. And only fish can be decenthed for culinarian decenths levels. You can check these decenths levels in the character info tab. Click on any of the crafters and we'll bring up a full window of all your decenth levels, which only affects your chance to get rare items out of the decenth. Which means if your luck is good, your decenth level isn't even going to matter anyway. And if your luck sucks like mine, you can max it out and still get nothing. The next major thing of note is at level 35, not because of the class quest, but an accessory upgrade. Remember, every single CP point matters. You can go and craft these items yourself as a goldsmith for even more CP by making them high quality. Or just buy the no quality versions from the vendors in town. I did the latter just to make things harder for myself to better advise people on anything as I go forward. Also, be sure to remove your mounts on your old gear before you get rid of it. You can remove material from gear at a guaranteed rate, anywhere, anytime. So when you upgrade gear, be sure not to get rid of the material too. It can be reused, and you definitely will want to. Now that we're also higher in levels, let's click that button at the top that before only showed us the Exali recipe list. We now have four tabs, Master Recipes which will be gone over in the level 50 video, Other which is for crafting dyes to color your gear, and Housing. Housing items is one of the most profitable ventures you can get into, especially when you know what sells and when they add new housing items and plots to the game. Real issue is figuring out what is selling if it's not new, and what sells for a lot, and getting the materials for a set of crafts. Some of these items need dozens and dozens of materials to craft. The good news is you have no requirements to high quality. Housing items are always no quality. But as far as things to note for crafter as you level to 50, that's about it. Keep plugging away at the class quests as they pop up for more gear, push onto leaves for huge EXP gains, get ready for the inevitable need of elemental crystals and clusters as crafting reagents, and keep grinding away. That basically covers everything you could want to know or do that isn't a deep dive into crafting, which as I said, I intend to do as its own thing. For now, keep running back and forth turning in those leaves for big payouts. Looks like you're not skipping leg day. Oh, and one last thing. If you're super rich already somehow, you can spend a mil or eight to buy leave kits, which are power leveling options crafted by other players. But given you're probably crafting to make money because you didn't have any to begin with, Best option is to just ask a friend to use your materials to craft your leave quests for you. But you're better off learning how to craft the items yourself. They won't always be there for you forever. And being self-sufficient is its own reward. Thanks for watching this crafted episode of Final Fantasy XIV, your first day. 
I actually expected there to be much more to go over here, but crafters aren't as involved as I remember in terms of questing and features and how they work on a base level. The deeper level now that's a complicated story. I'm going to get that out as soon as I can, but making a basic beginner's guide to crafting that also is in-depth is a contradiction for the ages. But that aside, when we come back to this series, we'll be heading back to the front lines to take down the Black Wolf and going through many level 50 things. I'm gonna have to make it be two parts too, because that's almost guaranteed with how much stuff unlocks at level 50. But that's for another time. Take care, and may the power of Ananid Hogs lay waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to all of my patrons over on Patreon. And an extra, extra special thanks to... Kathy Nock, Lemon, Meowfy, and Nick. If you'd like to become one of my Patreons, the link is down in the description. Thanks for watching.